Thank you for choosing to listen to today's message by Reverend Dr. David Entry. We know you will be blessed as you seek and serve God. We believe that this message will stir up a desire for more of God, even as you listen. Be blessed. You become born again so the Holy Spirit can come into you. The reason why you don't care about the Holy Spirit is because you're actually not really changed. But when you are changed, he says, he sends forth the spirit of his son into our hearts and the spirit cries out. So it's not your cry, it's his cry. Galatians chapter 5, 4, sorry. Verse 6, the spirit cries out, Abba, Father. Abba, Abba means is the, is the closest, very affectionate expression between a son, a genuine son and his dad. Daddy, dad, that's Abba, Father, very deep. And you can't call God Abba Father without the Spirit. Paul puts it this way in Romans chapter 8 verse 9. He said, if you don't have the Spirit of Christ, you are none of His. You don't belong to Him if you don't have His Spirit. Anyone who doesn't have the Spirit is not Christ. But you can't have the Spirit if you are not born again. Even when Jesus was on earth, He couldn't get the Spirit to go into them. Because none of them was born again. They had believed that he is the son of God. He is the Messiah. But they had not received the life of God in them until resurrection. So the Bible says, on the last day of the feast, John seven thirty seven, the last day of this feast, he stood up with a loud voice and he cried out, if any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink. For as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers. He who believes in me, out of his, as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Verse 39. For this, but Dick, this, what he just said, he spoke concerning, give me a new NIV. He said, but by this he meant the spirit. When he said, come and drink, he meant the spirit. Now go back. Verse, verse 38. He that believes on me, as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Verse 37. If any man tests, 37, on the greater, Jesus stood up and said, if anyone tests, let him come to me and drink. Drink what? He was talking about the spirit. When you drink the spirit, then there's a reaction. Something begins to flow. Rivers of living waters. It's not one way. It's not one day you're on fire and that's it. It's living waters. Rivers. It keeps flowing out of his belly, out of his inner man. Verse, the next verse, 30, 38. Uh, uh, streams of living waters shall flow from within him. Streams will be flowing. And he said, when he said this, he meant Look at verse 39, that's so strong. By this he meant the spirit. Whom, not which, is a he, is a person. Whom, those who believed in Jesus were later. Why later? To receive. Up to that time, the spirit had not been given. Why? Because Jesus had not hit the cross and resurrected to pave the way. So, it's like the Holy Spirit was just ready from Genesis. He was waiting for the moment Jesus would go to the cross and pay for the sins of man. So that you, former fornicator, liar, thief, abortionist, smoker, uh, gambler, uh, what? Pornographer. You, a former, can be filled with the Spirit. So Jesus had to die to clear you out of the way so that you will be, he will fill you. The Spirit will fill you. So the filling of the Spirit was waiting for a man to be born again. So on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost came upon them and the people were amazed, Amazed when they watched what was going to happen. Uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 7, 8, 9. They, they, were, they, they were shocked. Some Bible says some were amazed at what was happening. Some were amazed. Seven, then they were all amazed. And what? What? What's going on here? What? What? And there will always be some elements who will always try to disdain anything God is doing. So they explain it away. 
So, he said, for at that time, the spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet been, not, he didn't say crucified, but glorified. You see how God calls his crucifixion, his death, burial, and resurrection? I was preaching about two weeks or three weeks ago, and I preached on, we preach Christ crucified. But he didn't just get crucified. In fact, when you read the Bible very carefully, after the crucifixion, he was exalted. So why didn't they focus on the exaltation? And they rather focused on the crucifixion, which was a problem for people. The crucifixion is a humbling thing that if you are Jew, if you are Greek, because Jews were stumbling at it. Greeks considered it foolishness, but that's what they could have preached. He was exalted. He's elevated. He's in glory. They could have preached that and demonstrated it, but they preached Christ crucified. In Acts chapter 2, verse 37, it said, And when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said, verse 38, let's all read the verse 38 together. Let's go. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin. So, see, you see what ends? It's receiving of the Holy Spirit that ends there. The process. The process, you start with repentance, with baptism, forgiveness of sins. Then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The things you saw as and they marveled at what was happening, it can happen to you, but you enter from repentance. You enter from repentance. There are people who have come to, <laughs> who have come to receive Christ without repentance. <laughs> yeah. You want to give your life to you, you are coming to receive Christ. But you haven't repented. You haven't repented. It starts with repentance. Change your ways. Repentance means stop doing it. It starts with repentance. If you haven't repented, you are not born again. If you are genuinely born again, you turn your back to some things. And you turn your back to ungodliness. Titus chapter 2 verse 11. He said, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Verse 12. Teaching. If it comes to you to teach you some stuff. Teaching as that deny ungodliness and worldly lust. How come you are in church and so worldly? How come you are in church and ungodliness is normal for you? Last is normal. You, you, you fulfill your last at will. Anytime. Anytime. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Teaching. Teaching. That grace is teaching. It is said, oh, I'm under grace. So uh, we, you just leave us. As I serve God, gradually people will be changing. Changing for gradual. Do you stop stealing gradually after the police has caught you? <laughs> Acts 2, 38. He said, repent. Be baptized for the remission of sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit because it follows. Jesus had not yet been glorified. That means he had not yet been killed, resurrected. For the spirit to be given, for people to be born again. Then, when you become born again, you become born again so the spirit can find an ideal habitation inside you. God is looking for a place to live. So, he that is in the bush, he that dwelleth in the bush. There's a message I preach about when God saw Moses, when Moses saw, sorry, when Moses met God. Bed was in, God was in the bush. He was in the bush because he didn't have a, a, a dwelling place. He's, he's dwelling in the bush waiting for the day when a temple can be built for him to come in. So, he came to die so the spirit can come in us. Everything anybody ever did for God was a function of the spirit. And especially after 
the resurrection. They were doing amazing things for God, but it was the spirit. So yesterday I was teaching you about how it looks like something came upon them, but that something that came upon them was a person. And there are times where they said the Paul laid hands and the Holy Spirit came. Ah, so was the Holy Spirit waiting for Paul? If he's in charge, why didn't you him? Why didn't he come by himself? But I was waiting for them. There are times where somebody lied and they. they you will see the Holy Spirit, but Peter said you have lied against the Holy Spirit. Where is he? Let him speak for himself. Where is he? And then Bible says in Acts chapter uh, 5.32 that they went witnessing and the Holy Spirit was uh, uh, w- testifying with them. Bible says that, and we are witnesses of these things and so also is that, so as we are testifying, he's also testifying. He's not us alone. We are speaking and he's also speaking through us. So the Holy Spirit has always been Part of the church life. But it's easy for him to be marginalized. It's easy for him to be ignored. It's easy for us to Ananias and Sapphira lies our worship. Ananias and Sapphira, it wasn't the sin, it wasn't the lies that was the problem. They lost sight of the Holy Spirit. If they knew the Holy Spirit was in charge, do you think they would have done that? They wouldn't have. But they lost sight of the Holy Spirit. Men, the Bible said that Paul and Paul, contention was so great and their contention became so sharp that they departed. Meanwhile, Acts 13, 2 says that separate unto me Barnabas and Saul. Two chapters later, they were arguing and contending over John Mark. Say, okay, go your way. Me too, I'll go my way. What is it? You think you're the only one God has called you? Okay, me, I'll go with uh, Silas. Silas, let's go. You two can take John. And they parted company. That was the end of their fellowship. Anointed man. And Bible says that in verse 16, Paul went and in chapter 16, verse 4, and was delivering this message to the church. And the church started growing. This same anointed man. He called Timothy, circumcised him, said, Let's go, Timothy. I mean, man. But when you read chapter 13, verse 9, Paul, full of the Holy Ghost, full of the Holy Ghost, said to the Sostra, full of the Holy Ghost. So, I was telling my wife that when you are dealing with an anointed person, sometimes you have to be just careful and just blank your mind and focus on an anointing. I'm dealing with an anointing. I'm dealing with an anointing. And then as I was praying the other time, it just dawned on me. Sometimes even when you are anointed, there are times where you are not sure whether you are flowing in the oil or you are flowing in yourself. You may say something and you didn't know it's actually the Holy Ghost, or there are times you may be thinking it's the Holy Spirit, but it's yourself. There are times where you think it's yourself, it's the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit. It's inside. It's so intertwined that there are times that you are not able, that is, you are not able to tell the difference. That is why it is necessary. The message I'm trying to say is, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says that Barnabas was full, of, uh, Barnabas, yeah, a man full of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 11, verse 24. He was a man full of the Holy Spirit, so he helped the church when he got there. Peter, full of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 4, verse, verse 8 and 9. Full of the Holy Spirit, addressed the Sahindrin. Paul, Acts chapter 13, verse 9. Full of the Holy Spirit, got somebody blind. Stephen. Acts chapter 7, verse 55. Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, died. This is the message I want to look, watch this. Died. Look at verse 59. When he was dying. No, 55. Sorry, 55. 55. 55. By him being full of the Holy Spirit. Shall all of us say, full of the Holy Spirit. Full of the Holy Spirit. Say it again. Full of the Holy Spirit. For the last time. Full of the Holy Spirit. Full of the Holy Spirit. All right, saw heaven. And they started stoning him. Look at verse 59. They stoned Stephen as he called, was calling on the name of the Lord. Lord, receive my spirit. I want to surprise you. Look at the next verse. And he knelt down, crying, oh, Lord! Do not, do not charge them with this sin. Ah! Fiakwa. God, curse them with their descendants. <laughs> God, ah, they kill me as I'm dying, Lord. Kiss this one. They were who told me, God, kill him. <laughs> he, he, he cried out with a loud voice. 
and say, Lord, don't hold it this. Uh, don't, don't, do not charge this. Uh, uh, don't charge them with this sin they are doing. Don't charge it to them. Ah! What makes you think you can easily forgive without being full of the Holy Spirit? What makes you think you can keep your flesh under control without being filled with the Holy Spirit? What makes you think you can achieve anything for God without being full of the Holy Spirit? It takes being full of the Holy Spirit to do the God thing. Whether righteous living or whether building the church or being nice. If you can be nice by yourself, it is not godly. It's not God. It takes being full of the Holy Spirit. The point I'm making is that some, some of us, you are using your natural strength to award yourself spirituality. You are not spiritual until you are full of the Holy Ghost. When they were going to appoint the deacons to serve tables in the church, Acts chapter 6, they said, look for people who have good reputation. Boy, those who have been fighting people in church, good reputation matters. Good reputation matters. Full of the Holy, say full of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit. To do what? To go and distribute food in church. Wow. To distribute food. You must be full of the Holy Spirit. Full of the, he said, get them, we want someone. We don't want people who are not full of the Holy Spirit. When the pastor correct them, they're upset. Yeah. And you can't be full of the Holy Spirit without desiring it. It starts with desire. It start, and it happens through prayer. Laying on of hands. There's no, watch, I'm about to say something. Anywhere in the Bible where somebody, especially in the New Testament, received the Holy Spirit, you can't receive the Holy Spirit and not know. And the Spirit of God doesn't come on you and people around you don't notice it. When the Holy Spirit comes, it's obvious, you know. When it happens, you know. And then the long term, after you have left, it begins to produce fruits. One of the ways to have encounters and be filled with the Holy Spirit is in an atmosphere of prayer. In Acts chapter 4 verse 41, and when they had prayed, the place where they stood assembled shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. So they were filled. Peter was already filled from verse 8, but verse 31, they were all filled again. Because you can't get filled and full. It must be a continuous activity. Continuous activities, continuous activities. So they were filled when they had prayed. Bible says the second way too is when Peter, whilst Peter was just still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all those who were listening to him. Acts chapter ten, verse verse forty four, and in Luke chapter one, in Luke chapter one, verse forty one, Bible says that when Elizabeth heard the salutation, it happened when Elizabeth heard the greetings of Mary, the baby in the world of the joy, and she was filled. She heard something. The company, what you are hearing can expose you to be filling with the Holy Spirit. She was filled with the Holy Spirit when she heard the greetings. And in the book of uh, First Samuel chapter 10 verse 5, he says that, and after you have left me, you come to the hill of God. You see a company of prophets coming. And when you meet them, the Spirit, they will be prophesying. And the Spirit of God will come upon you. He also begin to prophesy. Verse 10 says that, and he met them, and the Spirit of God came upon him and began to prophesy, and he was turning to another man. Do you know the point there? The company, he fell into a certain company in Acts chapter 2 verse 1. Bible says that when the Holy Spirit, the, the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all together in one place and with one accord. And verse 4 said, and they were all filled. If, if you are there, you'll be filled. If you were there, you'll be filled. So be there. Prayer, company, preaching, and laying on of hands. These are means why the people get filled with the Holy Spirit. We thank God for using his servant, Reverend Dr. David Entry, to share this awesome word. If this message has blessed you in any way, please spread the word by sharing it and send us an email to amen at caris.org. Remember to stay connected with us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter for regular updates on what God is doing.